Welcome back to the lab, your place for tutorial, travel and inspiration. I'm pretty sure you know this iconic map animation from GTA 5 and today I will show you how to recreate it. First go to Google Maps and down here you can go here to more, then enable here the global view and deselect all the labels. Then decide where you want to start and where you want to end your animation. So for example I want to start somewhere around here and I want to end somewhere around here. So make sure both locations are in the same frame and make a screenshot of this. Then zoom a little bit into the first area you want to be. For example like this, make another screenshot. Then zoom further in. Make another screenshot and then make a close-up and make the last screenshot. Then we do exactly the same thing with the second location. Just make like a wider shot, like so. Then zoom a little bit in and at the end the close-up shot. These are all the screenshots you need. Here in DaVinci I've got all the screenshots. Then place the widest shot down here and stack the others above each other, something like this, and make sure they are all at the same length for around, let's say, 10 seconds. We can shorten that later. So from top down, we have here this close-up shot, then we have this one, this one, this close-up shot, this one, this one, this one, and this one is the widest. So we've got all these clips stacked on each other, and with all this, we create a new fusion clip and jump right into fusion. So your fusion will look like this now. You can delete the background node and all the merge nodes. Then click on each one here on the left dot that you know which one it is. So this is the very last shot I want to use. Then we have here six. This is the second last. This one comes here. This one is the closest. There's somewhere around here. Then this one this one and this one is the wide shot so take the widest shot here this one and place it here at the beginning let me rename them real quick so it's a bit more organized for you so this is the exact order you need first we have here the overview plugged into the media out this is the shot with both locations visible then first we need the wide one, mid one and close one, then wide two, mid two, close two. You need to make it in this order so that the closest shot from these three is on top. So when you plug this in, it's every time with the green input and every shot you plug in is with the green input. So that means that's in top of the other shot. So this mid shot is on top of the wide shot and you need to make it in this order, otherwise it won't work. Then when we've plugged in our wide shot, hit shift and spacebar and type in transform. And now we need to position this shot. For that, we go here to the merge node, settings and turn the blend mode down so we can see through this image. Go to the transform node and now we need to make this smaller and reposition this shot until it fits perfectly with the other shot. It could be that it doesn't fit perfectly so just make sure that the center point you, you've had so the closest shot was in this area so make sure this area is as perfect as possible like this looks good to me. Go here to the merge node and turn the blend mode all the way up to one. And now to make the transition of these two images even smoother, take here a rectangle mask, plug it here into the shot. Then here width and height, you can turn it up all the way to one and just increase here at the soft edge. So here the transition from, from the images are not so hard. So we have here a bit of a, of a feather inside. So that's the first shot. Now you need to do exactly the same one with each other shot. So plug it in. Go to the merge node, settings, turn the blend mode down, hit shift and spacebar, type in transform and position the shot where it needs to be. You can zoom in here by holding control or command and scroll with the mouse wheel. Here once again, turn the blend mode up and plug a rectangle mask on top. 
and increase the soft edge. Now do this with all other clips. So when you've done with all the transforms, your image should look something like this. You have the overview and all the images placed inside it, so it's not clearly visible. And even when we zoom in here, we have it just a little bit visible here and there, but that's totally fine. So, and now we just need to animate this. For that, we select here the last merge node, hit shift and spacebar, type in transform. And this transform node here needs to be all the way here at the end so we can animate this whole node tree. So with this transform node selected I go up here and when I zoom in you can see it zooms in exactly to the center and this is not what we want we want to zoom in here where we've done our adjustment so the first person starts here. So go here to the pivot point and position the pivot point exactly there where you want to zoom in. And now when I zoom in, you can see it goes directly here to the pivot point. And you see the quality is now very good. Maybe you have noticed before as I zoomed in, the quality was not so good. But here with the transform node, when we zoom in, we deleted that issue. So we zoom in here to maybe around 65 you can type in whatever you want here and zoom into that and then I want to stay at this place for around 10 frames So I'll go here to frame 10 set here on size a keyframe Then I want to zoom out to have like 15 frames go to frame 25 then I zoom out to Maybe around here here automatically created a keyframe then I want to stay here for around five frames. So we have this zoom out, it stops and then again zoom out. So create here once again a keyframe without any adjustments. Then 15 frames later, I want to zoom out somewhere around here. Five frames later, we stay here with no adjustments, the keyframe set. And this is the position we want to fly over to the second position. So don't zoom out to one. And now I need to set here before I go over on the pivot point also a keyframe because we need to change the pivot point to the other location. So I go here 15 frames further then I adjust here just the pivot point. So you can see it it's not here the red one it's down here the green one and just adjust the pivot point to your second location. So this location is around here. And just let it stay there set here on size also a keyframe and then we stay here once again for five frames once again a keyframe just on size you can forget the pivot point now 15 frames further then here we zoom in maybe to around 12 five frames we stay still then 15 frames later we zoom further in we stay for five frames, keyframe, 15 frames later, we zoom all the way in. So now you can open up your splines up here, then enable here at the transform. Click on this little icon, zoom to fit, and your curve should look something like this. So here we have the zoom, and down here, this little curve is the pivot point. So first we deselect the size so we have only the pivot point. Click here on zoom to fit. Press command or control A to select everything. Press S and then T. We press T to open up this menu up here. And then we want to make the fly animation very fast and then go slow. So we have it very smooth. So go here to around 80 or 90. So it starts fast and then goes slow. So this is just the, the fly over here. So from this to this position here. Then deselect here the displacements. We, we just want the size. Click here once again, zoom to fit. So we have here the size. Click command or control A and F this time. Press not S because when we press S, we have down here everywhere a curve where we don't want to have it. Press F so we have here the straight lines. And then here, like you have it in GTA, it starts very fast and then it goes slow. It's almost like, like a jump cut. So we press here to ease in all the way up to 100. Because now you see it goes fast, fast, 
we have every time when it starts it goes very fast and then slow in my opinion the animation is a bit too fast so i will adjust here the keyframes down here on the splines here the the five frames in between are too short and even here it could be around like 20 fr 20 frames so i select everything here except for the first keyframe then i hover over a keyframe until my mouse looks to the right side like this here then with holding down shift i drag them over five frames then i make the same step once again here five frames more then i take all these five frames more and now i repeat that process with every single one i have like this you can easily adjust the keyframes here in your spline to make the animation way smoother then we select once again everything with command or control a and press f to smoothen them once again because the curve is now different and here ease in is still on 100 maybe you need to select them once again press f and then turn it all the way up to 100. now let's watch it back way smoother it was too fast at the beginning so make it around 20 frames long then to add the jerry on top you can add some clouds i've downloaded mine from envato elements this video is not sponsored from them i just think they have some very awesome stuff you can use to elevate your videos to the next level so i just took here this white cloud downloaded it and got it here in davinci then i put it here into the fusion file Make sure you put it in before the transform node here where you've done all the movement. Just plug it here inside. And now you see when I go through the timeline and we zoom in, the cloud is not being affected. So that's important that you place it before the transform node. So then we go here to the section where we zoomed out all the way. Go here to the merge node and now you can adjust the merge node, the size and the position where you want the cloud to have maybe the blend turned a little bit down so it's a bit more transparent maybe one cloud here then i copy this over take this cloud here maybe i flip it so it's not the same shape make it smaller and with that you can place very easy some clouds here so when we watch it back we have some clouds here in the scene makes it way more engaging that's just a little cherry on top and when you're happy with the animation one last thing and trust me make it at the end your pc will thank you go here to the transform node settings then here enable motion blur the quality put it to around four or six and the shutter angle to around 230 but of course you can adjust the motion blur as strong as you want to have in my opinion it looks the best like that so that's pretty much it for this gta 5 map animation have fun creating and see you in the next one